Hello everybody, it's Ian here, the storyteller. You might be wondering what I'm holding in my hand. You may even think it's something like an onion or a strange looking apple. It isn't. It's actually a fruit called a pomegranate. And the reason I'm holding a pomegranate is because this week's story is uh, all about a pomegranate. Uh, my friend uh, Gary Gacko Bridgins and uh, Professor Pumpernickel and I got together to talk about what the theme of this week's story would be and we decided it would be about magic and so uh, that's what the story is about but it's about uh, this fruit and what I love about this fruit is it looks a bit strange but it's full of beautiful jewels look at that mm, and I can't wait to dive into this fruit and eat all the jewels inside it so we hope you enjoy the story that we presented for you. You have to listen carefully to it. It's a harder story this week. But if you like our story, please leave us a comment and let us know. And uh, more importantly, share it with all your friends. Get your nan around. Well, you can't at the moment, can you? But send it to her and get her to read it, uh, listen to it as well. So enjoy the story. Much love, much light to you all. And very much looking forward to seeing you down at Eureka. And uh, take care. Ta-ta for now. There was once in a far off land a young mother who had so many children that the house they lived in rattled with the sound of their rumbling tummies. And so to make money to feed them, each day she would take a big clay pot and fill it from the river and the water she would sell from door to door while well, she worked hard and you know, she just about got by. All was well for many years. The young woman was able, through hard work, to put food on the table to feed her young family. But you know, time never stands still. And one day, somebody invented something called the tap. And everybody had running water in their houses. And so they didn't need the services of a water carrier. And the woman and her family got poorer and poorer. You see, no money meant no food. It got so bad that one evening, as she sat by her fire, she had to listen to the sound of her children crying themselves to sleep because they were so hungry. And so she made a decision. She decided that the very next day she would head off to the great city, off in the distance. There, she would find work. There she might find her fortune. And so the very next day, the young woman decided to travel alone to the great city way off in the distance. A great journey indeed. She left her children in the care of a friend and took to the road well, it was a really hot day, and by the time she travelled half the distance, the sun was already high in the sky, and the woman was tired and weary indeed. But you know, as she sat there in the shade of the tree, eating the small amount of food she had, she noticed along the road an old frail woman and so she beckoned to her to come and rest. The old woman's face was etched with weariness and so the young woman who felt an instant love for her, for this stranger, offered her half of the food. Well they sat together and they talked and ate until it was time to leave. But the old lady, as way of thanks, gave the young woman a gift. An old, soggy pomegranate. And told her that indeed it was magic. And would help her if ever she was in need. Eventually, the young woman arrived in the city 
The hustle and the bustle and the sounds and the smells took her by surprise. She'd never seen anything like it, but she remembered her hungry children. And so she set to. She went around the market, asking all the stall holders whether they needed anybody to work for them. But every time she received the same answer, and that was no. There was no work anywhere. And for three whole days, she tried and she tried and she tried. Well, every evening, she would have to sleep at the edge of the market. In the street, you see. And one morning when she woke up, suddenly she felt a pang of hunger inside her stomach like she'd never felt before. After three days of not eating, she had no strength to carry on. Well, I can tell you, because I've been on this planet for a good few years now, there are some things that go straight through your nose and down to your stomach. They're called smells. And there's no finer when you're hungry than freshly baked bread. And that's what came to the nose of the woman as she laid there in the street. Fresh bread. Well, she stood up and she followed that smell through the market. She could see there was a man and under his arm he had a basket with freshly baked bread. And it looked and smelled beautiful. And she thought to herself, a thought that she'd never had before. You see, she'd always been an honest woman. she tried all her life. But when she saw that bread, she thought to herself, if I could but eat just one of those loaves, I would have the strength to carry on and feed my children. Well, you know, desperate times lead to desperate measures. And so she made a choice. She followed the man until she could see he was busy selling his wares. She stretched out her hand and she stole one of those loaves. And she made her way through the market. But the problem was somebody had seen her. And before she knew it, somebody cried, Thief! Thief! Well, she was chased through the market. And before she knew it, she was on the ground. And all around her there were people saying, Thief! Thief! Well, it came to the ears of the guards of the king. And they came into the market. And they asked what had happened. And when they learned, they turned to the woman and said, Woman, we don't tolerate thieves in this city. Thieves are sent to the dungeons and they're never seen again. Well, the woman thought that all was up and there was no chance that she would ever re return to her children when suddenly she felt something in the pocket of her cloak. She put her hand inside and she touched the skin of the old pomegranate and an idea came to her mind she whispered I have a secret and if I die my secret dies with me well people in the market they gathered round they wanted to know what the woman had said and so louder this time she said I have a secret and if I'm sent to the dungeons my secret will go with me well everybody wanted to know what the secret was and she was about to tell them when suddenly there was a great trumpet sound and into the market came the king who demanded to know what was happening. The guard said, this woman here, she says she has a secret and if she goes to the dungeon for being a thief, well, her secret will go with her. We don't tolerate thieves, said the king, but I like secrets. Now tell me what it is, woman. Well, the young woman, she held up the pomegranate and she said to the king, Your Majesty, this pomegranate is magic. If somebody who is honest and true of heart was to take a seed from this pomegranate and put it into the ground, overnight a magic pomegranate tree will grow, laden with so many pomegranates that people from all around the world will gather and the owner of that tree will be the most famous person in the land. Well, the king, he liked fame. And so he called for his treasurer, the man who owned 
his money and said, Treasurer, you must be honest and true of heart. Plant the seed. Well, most people noticed as the treasurer picked up the seed that the treasurer's hand was somewhat shaky when he put the seed into the ground and then everybody went home for the evening. That night, as everyone in the castle and the great city slept, they all had the same dream. That there, in the courtyard of the king, where the seed had been planted, a beautiful pomegranate tree magically grew. And its branches were laden with fruits and people came from all around the world to see it. There's my pomegranate tree, shouted the king that morning. You see, he, like everybody else, had shared that dream and he excitedly opened up his shutters to look out into the courtyard and there the tree was not. Well, the woman was dragged to the feet of the king, who was indeed furious. But the woman calmly looked at the king and said, Your Majesty, I did say that somebody honest and true of heart had to plant the seed. Maybe you need to ask questions of your treasurer. Well, when the treasurer was brought to the king, he shook with fear and said, your Majesty, I'm a busy man and sometimes the odd coin, well, it drops into the folds of my cloak and I cannot but help take it home. Well, the treasurer was taken away and never seen again. Surely, said the king, that somebody in my kingdom must be honest and true of heart. Well, that's when the woman spoke again and she said, Your Majesty, surely you are honest and true of heart, for you are the king. Of course, he said. Why didn't I think of that before? I shall plant the seed. Well, people gathered round excitedly, and the king, he took a seed from the pomegranate, and confidently he went towards the ground, but suddenly people looked curiously, for they could see that the king's hand started to shake and then he stopped. The courtyard went quiet. The king, he looked confused and then a little frightened as he looked at everybody assembled there and said, I'm sorry, I can't plant the seed because I'm not honest nor true of heart. I have a story to tell. Well, you know, once when I was very young, I used to play in my mother's bedroom all day. And oh, how I loved to dance and skip along. But there was one thing that I loved to do more than anything else. And that was to gaze in wonder at my mother's great emerald. Oh, how it sparkled in the light. But it made my heart sore to each day have to put it back. Well, you know, one day I did the most terrible of things. I loved that emerald so much that I decided to steal it and keep it for my very own. King continued. He said, eventually, my mother realised that the emerald had disappeared and she loved that jewel so much that she had the city and the castle turned upside down to find it. Well, eventually, they came to see me. Well, I was frightened and I blamed it on a serving woman and she was banished to walk the land forevermore. 
and I never told them where the emerald lay. The courtyard was silent, and the king stood there in deep thought. And eventually he turned, and he looked at the lady cowering on the floor, and his face, it changed. And as he looked at her, he said, Woman, I accused you of being a thief, to be sent away to the dungeons and never seen again. And I today have seen the error of my ways, for truly nobody is innocent. We are all equal. We are all the same. What kind of man would I be to send you away when I myself am a thief? But you know I have a thought, said the king, that you're a wise woman, and maybe you've taught me the error of my ways, and so I have an offer for you. I would like you to come and live here in the castle with me and be my royal adviser. Well, the woman, she sat for a while and she thought, and then she turned to the king and she said, I accept, on one condition, that I can bring all my children to live here too. Well, the king, he laughed out loud and said, of course you can. Well, of course, he hadn't uh, banked on how many children the woman had, and pretty soon that castle was a busy place indeed. But I do hear that that castle, it turned out to be the finest castle in the finest city in all the land. And that, dear friends, is almost the end of our tale. And we do hope that you have enjoyed it. But we can't leave without a mention of the old lady, who is, as they say, still out there. And if you meet her, don't pass her by. Respect her and care for her. For you never know, she might pass on to you a magical gift that might help, if ever, you're in need.